นักหเลิกไม่ได้ไม่ได้แฟลตเตอร์มาบอยในดรูม20ปีเยอะแยะนะแล้วสิ่งที่เกิดขึ้นกับเขาในช่วงวัยที่เขาเกิดขึ้นในช่
He had a wife he'd been with for three decades. That's a beautiful thing. And when he lost his wife, he wasn't able to recover clearly. But here's the thing. He started going after what he had wanted for a long time. He started going out after one of them hot young tings, you dig? Not having any ability to self-reflect and say, hey, am I qualified for this? Yes, I might want it, but am I qualified for it? And often we find that we suffer because we want things that are not meant for us. How is it that we all want the supermodel, but we don't look like supermodels? We all want the woman who's the prize, but we don't have the bank account to pay the price. It is having control over your mind. huh? Having control over your desires. When you don't have control over those things, you become a victim of yourself. See, they're positioning this as though he became victim of some young harlots or he became victim of some internet scammers, but really he was a victim of his own frailty. Aguid has asked him for money. He's worried that both of the women that he has... Okay, so homie, he, he playing two of them tangs on, online. He playing the numbers. He tried to see which one is going to go. Let's get intelligent. People tell me I'm... Okay, so first off, um, whoa, 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 almost caught it. His neck fell. His neck fell, <laughs> but he caught it on his chest. <laughs> he, he holding his neck up with his chest. <laughs> boy, pick your neck up, boy. <laughs> that man needs to quit fucking eating. Maybe if he could get that straight, everything else in life might fall in place. Motherfucker be over here going, yeah, yeah, on them famous Amos cookies. You remember them? The old school. Why are you looking at me with the evil eye? Hello, social catfish. My name is Brian. I'm pretty intelligent. People tell me. Ah, see, you heard that right there? He said, my name is Brian. I'm pretty intelligent. We say so much about ourselves. But if we really want to measure up ourselves, sometimes we have to get outside of ourselves and consider what others have said about us. And more importantly, consider the products. You know, if you're intelligent, what is the product of your intelligence? How much money do you have to show? How many accolades and accomplishments do you have to show? That's how you can figure out if it's really real. You're intelligent, but you got scammed for a quarter of a million dollars. It's two different women. I guess your brain is useless and you're lame and stupid. That's not intelligent. Austin came back on Cash App and said, traded his neck for an extra chin. <laughs> That man is evil. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, and, and look at this goofy bassa. Yeah, goofy bassa. He over here with his cat. The boy feminine is all get out. Man, I'm very funny and sarcastic. I enjoy riding motorcycles. I have seven of them. Boy, I would hate to smell his motorcycle seat. That's what, that's what we should do. We should torture terrorists by making them smell Brian's motorcycle seat. This fat rascal, I know this boy be sweating something vicious. <laughs> Just imagine the sweat under his neck in this crevice right here. In this crevice. <laughs> oh, Lord. This man said, yeah, I'm Brian. I'm pretty intelligent and people like me because I'm, uh, I'm uh, smart and sarcastic. Sarcasm is a good quality. Nah, actually, sarcasm is the lowest form of humor. And sarcasm tends to be negative. And if you pride yourself on sarcasm, it really makes me question like the, the nature of person you are. I, I tend to think you're a bit of a, a lower class person. And, you know, the amazing thing, just side note before we carry on, you know, when you unbutton your, your shirt, right, you usually show a little bit of the chest. You hear me? Show the chesticles. Show a little bit of chest hair. You know your neck is far down there when a nigga didn't unbutton his shirt and you can't even see his chest. Nigga, neck is on the second button. This shit crazy, but here's what's worse. You, the man can't even button his shit up. I, think, I don't think he's trying to uh, unbutton it just to get ventilated and get some air. You know, I think the man didn't unbutton his shit because he can't button it. <laughs> Fuck around. The ambulance show up. How did he die? What was the cause of death? The coroner's like... He buttoned his top. He buttoned his top button. <laughs> Nigga suffocated himself. <laughs> Nigga suffocated himself. Hey, listen to me. I hate laughing at my own jokes. I swear I do. I swear I do. But shit, I'm enjoying myself. God damn it, carrying on. Oh boy. Oh. Look at this boy right here. My wife.
he didn't squeeze his fat ass face in into this helmet. Oh no! Very funny and sarcastic. Oh, I enjoy man. riding motorcycles. I have seven of them. Boy got seven motorcycles. I'm gonna go ahead and say he's uh he's consuming a bit too much and he doesn't know how to manage very well, manage his his uh desires, even if you have the money, seven motorcycles, it's a bit much. All right, look at bro right here. So he got one of his old photos from when he like, you know, when he knew when to stop fucking eating. Uh then he got his new photo. He didn't squeeze his goddamn face into it. It damn near might be photoshopped, actually. My wife never rode with me. I look forward to someone that would want to ride. With Shit, I can't blame your wife for not wanting to ride with your sweaty ass, boy. I mean, and at the end of the day, when you're on the back of a motorcycle, don't you have to wrap your arms around the person's waist? Shit, your wife's arms wasn't that long. That's why she couldn't ride with you, boy. And I am a voracious reader. Probably read 90 to 110 books a year. I have a That's bachelor's voracious. degree in psychology. Okay, now I want you guys to pay attention to this. Now listen to what his degrees are in. Go ahead, hit me. Let me throw Okay. We have Cole said question in the chat. Cole, Cole. I'll get to that when it gets in the chat. Okay, cool. 90 to 110 books a year. I have a bachelor degree in psychology. Okay, so he has a BA in psychology. Now, I could respect it if he took that mass, uh, that uh, that major because there's hella holes in there. There's a lot of thoughts in there, a lot of dumb broads who are twisted up in the head. They're trying to figure themselves out. So that, that class is overpopulated with dim-witted broads, but they're good looking, so I can't hate him for that. But he seems like the feminine type, so he probably was in there for the same reason the broads were in there. And human resources. Okay. Was that a master's degree in human resources? Did you hear? I just heard human resources. Okay. So he also has a degree in human resources. This is critical. So pay attention. Now, here's the funny thing. You got a guy who has a degree in psychology, which is essentially the study of the mind, right? And so this fella <laughs> has a degree in the study of the mind, and he's getting manipulated by scammers in the third world. Guess your degree is useless. And uh, I guess you didn't learn a damn thing now, did you? Now, the amazing thing lets you know how rotten these colleges are giving out these meaningless degrees that don't teach you a damn thing. Uh, if you want to learn a little bit about human psychology, you probably should learn a little something from them scammers. Because if if anybody knows human psychology, surely they do. Fleece your dumb ass out of a quarter milli. There are probably 10 or 12 different drugs that I see commercials for on the market now that I had a hand in as a researcher. Okay, see, now that I don't believe. And that's why I think he's experiencing so many troubles in life because he's a liar. And the worst person to lie to is yourself. Worst person to lie to is yourself. He's a liar. He has a bachelor's degree in psychology, which is not a professional degree. He has a, I presumably a master's. He didn't say which degree, but he said in human resources, right? Neither of those degrees would an enable you to be a proper researcher for a pharmaceutical and he just referenced the number of drugs being out on the market for which he was a meaningful researcher i don't believe that sounds ludicrous huh so being that he likes to delude himself and also exaggerate his intelligence for that we have to know he's going to end up making some poor decisions if you guys can confirm that um you can still see me that would be good carrying on in 2020, Brian's wife of 30 years was diagnosed with stage three cancer. With his medical background, he was able to. Now, here's the funny thing. They just said with his medical background. In fact, I quote with his medical background. What medical background? Boy has a degree in psychology, a bachelor's, which is not a practical degree. And he has a human resources degree. What medical background are we talking about? You see how easily people get lied to? Read his wife's charts to find out how long she had left to live. My medical background and that I could read charts and my knowledge was a lot better and deeper and broader than hers. She believed what her physician told her. Okay, now listen to the arrogance. You see, this level of hubris is why he was victim. This fella just stated that with a bachelor's in psych and a human resources degree, he was able to read charts better than an oncologist, that is to say a trained physician in the field of cancer. So he's saying, I know more than the expert who's went to school for a long time, then did a residency and then practiced in the field. I know more than that guy in a field I'm not in. 
boy, that's a high level of hubris right there. High. He's overconfident. And you know what happens when you're overconfident? You can't see your own errors, your own mistakes. Uh, you won't listen to reason. She talked with me about it afterwards, and she wanted to know what I thought. And I said, I think you have 28 to maybe 33 months. And she actually died in 30 months. But I will say. I like how he's giving us these uh, anecdotes that have no uh, way to verify if it's true or not. But carry on, my boy. You're telling me your wife said, how long? She's like, doctor, doctor, shut up, shut up. Fat guy, how long do I have to live? <laughs> Come on, stop it. For anyone that ever had cancer, she never thought about it. She didn't let it get her down. She just went on about her daily. Go ahead. We have Carlos as a new listener. He did ask if you're a comedian or just a funny guy. And then he wanted to know, are you relationship coach? First time listener, enjoy your delivery for sure. And he well, said he did subscribe and he's going to share with his friends. Well, I appreciate that, Carlos. And everyone welcome him warmly to this thing of ours. Uh, chiefly, I'm a businessman. So my background is mostly in technology, founding technology companies. And what I do is business. I have expertise in a number of different verticals. I've operated corporations around the world, mostly in Asia. Thank you for your support and your question. And, and you'll have to let us know how you uh, end up coming across us. Life as she always did. Now, the funny thing also about this fella is, you know, I'm not saying you shouldn't upgrade in life. You absolutely should try. I say go for the best. But how is it that you went from this, this woman here, right? You went from this woman here and you try to go from her to a 25-year-old Ukrainian bombshell. Or you try to go from her to a 24-year-old Korean bombshell. That, that, that seemed like quite a big skit. Okay, we have Cole. His cash up question says, my dad sends so much of his money to the Philippines to the point he's struggling with bills. Do you think there's any way to get through or should I just separate myself? Yeah, I would go ahead and make sure that I'm not relying on his money. So, for example, if I was 18 or older, I'd be asking myself, okay, homie's in a, 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 a ship like that's taking on water. There might be a hole in the ship. It's taking on water. And instead of scooping the water out and getting it out of the ship, he's scooping water out of the ocean and pouring it into the ship. The ship's going down. And you know what? Being that he's doing something that is detrimental to himself. Uh, shit. I mean, just imagine if circumstantially something tried to hurt him. He's hurting himself. Oh, this ain't gonna go well. And he's an adult male. Ah, I'm going to go ahead and say he's probably not prone to, you know, accepting my suggestions as his son. That being the case, I'm about to go ahead and get my stuff right because, uh, nah, you know, they, they, yeah, they, this ship is sinking. Yeah. Here's the thing. He has to know what he's doing is not helping himself. I mean, this is not a complex situation, so you'd be wise to look out for number one. After my wife's passing, I was missing people and having someone in my life, a partner. I looked at. Now, let me point out one thing that often doesn't get mentioned enough. And this is especially true for males. You see, uh, number one, we tend to human beings when they get into a romantic relationship, uh, sometimes they get in because they don't have much else outside of that relationship, be it family or friends. Or sometimes they get into that relationship and they neglect their family and friends, their other relationships. And so if you only have that wife and then she passes away, you don't have any other women, which is not player. Uh, she passes away and you don't have a real friend network. You don't have proper hobbies and things you like to do with other men. Then basically it feels like the entire world is caving in because you didn't have any infrastructure, any psychological supports other than that one woman. At different dating sites, and I found a uh, dating site for Slavic women. I met somebody there. Her name is Anastasia. See, now this guy, he said he went on dating sites to meet chicks. Okay. That should be red flag number one, my boy. Uh, if you are of the quality of man that you could meet a woman who looks like this, you can meet this woman. You should be able to meet her in real life anywhere around the world. You know, what's special about Ukraine? Are those women not women? Are those women not females? You should be able to meet her anywhere in the world. But instead, you go to an impoverished country to do so. 
or you start paying all this money and you think like, oh, things are going well, not realizing that, you know, the difference between me meeting her in person and meeting her online is online. I paid. I'm paying for something here. She was five, six, 25 years old, beautiful brunette, had a uh, gorgeous smile. And I want you all to be very mindful of how he's describing this female. He's really describing her according to his priorities. And he has his priorities out of order. He's described her physicality. She's beautiful, gorgeous, brunette, five, six, all physical. Huh? Let's you know that his obsession, he also uh, states her age. His obsession is with youth and beauty. Youth and beauty, which some men can get that. I'm looking at bro, bro. He in some dark ass apartment with some bullshit ass art. Uh, his neck is sitting on his goddamn chin and uh, look like he got a mean receiver. He got the Carl Winslow, the Carl Malone, all of the Carls. Uh, he's not in a strong position. So he's trying to get a deal. And one thing I can tell you as a businessman that I know for sure, you never get a deal. You always get what you pay for. You never get a deal. Even if they say there's a discount or a sale, you did not get a deal. You got what you paid for. If you paid a little bit of money, you probably got a little bit of value. Huh? Rolls Royce don't go for cheap. The Maybach doesn't go for a little. Austin is back on Cash App. He said, this man's ear is buried in his fat face. <laughs> this dude. Uh, let me take a look, though, just in case, just to make sure. It does appear, though, that that ear has disappeared. It's like it's like uh, fused. I'm just reading comments. It's fused. The ear is fused. <laughs> Carry on. Probably the prettiest blue eyes I had ever seen. Still describing the beauty. Goddamn. I reached out to her. It wasn't a normal pickup line. It was actually what I was feeling at the time. I said, I think you have the most amazing blue eyes that I've ever seen. That's what I was feeling. Bro, what look I it off with that. This is some of the worst game I've ever heard in life. You have the most amazing blue eyes I've ever seen. This is hyperbolic. Hyperbole. I do. I can't even lie to you. I did see this one chick. Her, her eyes were insane. I thought they were fake. I, I asked her, like, yo, where did you get those contact lenses or those color contacts? Yeah, those are fire. They look hell of authentic. She's like, these are my real lives. I was like, ah, no, I don't, I don't believe that. She showed me a picture of her daddy at the same eyes. They were gorgeous. Pause, no homo. They were gorgeous. I say that to say this. That's one person in my entire life that I've ever been impressed with. And I didn't even issue out a compliment. I thought it was fake. I know the nature of this world. This guy. You're the most beautiful, you're the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen. I ever, ever in my whole life. Forever, ever? Ever, ever. I've never seen them that pretty ever seen. That is disgusting, my boy. And here's the worst thing. You're looking at a photograph. You're not telling her this to her face. And here's the worst part. You're not telling her. God damn it, you're being scam fish. But the sad thing is that he allowed essentially his carnal desires to drive him. It will always drive you to destruction. One thing I realized, we're so hard on these harlots and these 304s and these OnlyFans girls, not realizing that we are the problem. You see, if we didn't have out of control sexual desire, an OnlyFans girl would be broke. That industry would be dead. If we didn't have the inability to control ourselves, these slores wouldn't be out here dressing like harlots because we wouldn't even look at them. We have all of the power to shut them down. When you see one of them uh, twerkers on Instagram, you go ahead and report them. I'm not going to lie to you. Every time I see a chick in a state of half undress, I report her on Instagram for nudity because I don't want it. I think it's disgusting. I don't want kids looking at it, and I don't want her making a penny. Keep them broke. I felt that's what I said. Her message back to me, she had looked at my profile. She told me that I was handsome. She lying like a motherfucker. Also, if I rode and I liked motorcycles. On the Ukrainian sites, a lot of the women are gorgeous and attractive. Everyone on. How many times has this boy mentioned gorgeous and attractive? He's obsessed. And you want to understand, you know, when you look at a term like simp, I like to think of this as simpleton. He's a simpleton. Someone who is simple-minded. 
foolish, base. He's a one, two, three, ABC kind of guy. The girl's pretty, I'll take her. Shouldn't have to have any other qualifications. How many of us are like that? You observe your, your, your favorite athlete. That's who they are. This, this fat white guy is who your favorite black basketball player actually is. The only difference is he's able to get the girl and keep her. But they, they get the same thing, which is a woman who has no value. Brittany Renner, how do you think she's getting these guys? Because they're brain dead simpletons. They just want sex with a woman that's beautiful. Not realizing that even if you lay down with a gorgeous woman, to you, no matter how beautiful she is, eventually it fades to you. You become immune to it. You've seen it too many times. It doesn't impress you anymore. It's like having the best filet mignon in the world. If you were to have it 10 days in a row, by the 10th day, it's eh. That side I was on. This message sparked everything between Brian and Anastasia. After a few months of chatting, Brian had planned a trip to the Ukraine to marry her. Uh, Damn, boy. First off, we're talking about months and this boy talking about marriage. That's crazy. Number two, you're going all the way over to the Ukraine. That's crazy. Number three, you've not consulted a lawyer, but you're ready to get into a major legal contract that spans the whole of your life. As a businessman, you know, if I got a big contract coming on, I for sure want an attorney to look at it. The greatest contract you'll ever sign, or I guess I should say the worst contract you'll ever sign, is one that spans that long. Marriage spans even longer than a mortgage. It's a long time. And we don't even have lawyers vet it. We don't have wise counsel advise us on that. Curious. Uh, we were supposedly in love. She was in love with me, and I went there with an engagement. <laughs> My boy said we were supposedly in love. You supposedly in love, but you certain of marriage. Engagement ring that I had bought. We went with a lab diamond. My boy said we went with a lab diamond. Like we, like we picked it out together. My nigga, you was on the internet surfing. Come on, bro. Knock it off. I flew 8,200 kilometers in uh, late January, February of 2021. I remained in Kiev and the Ukraine for 38 days. I have an eerie feeling that Kiev doesn't look like this anymore. I'm just, I'm going out on a limb. I'm going out on a limb. I feel like Kiev maybe doesn't look like this anymore. It's just, it's just a hunch I have. With this woman, I never met her in the 38 days I was there. Damn. First off, you were there for 38 days. That's a long time. Even for me, being in one city, a foreign country for 38 days, that's a long time. Number one, number two, you said the whole 38 days you were there, you didn't meet her one time. That means that she kept feeding him excuse after excuse after excuse. The reason that this is relevant to you all even though you might not be dealing with a catfish, you might not be dealing with uh, a woman you've never met, this is what they do. A lot of women, even if they're not scamming you, they don't have the principle to use the word no or even the word yes. But you know what word they love? Maybe. They say nothing is black and white, but it turns out to them everything is gray. And in this gray matter, in, in this gray haze that covers their ability to think and see, they keep on lying to you and stringing you along. Shout out to Rando supporting the work. She wanted to chat with me on the uh, site while I was there, but to actually come to my hotel or meet me at a restaurant or anything, I returned to the U.S. Brian flew back to the U.S. from the Ukraine. Anastasia had so many excuses on why she could not meet him at the hotel. Boy, she told him she worked for a company and they didn't allow her to meet up with clients. After the lies that people believe. And here's a, a great psychological tool I want to give to this fat fella. So if any of you guys know um, this, this dude who looks like a, a stunt double for a mall Santa. <laughs> If any of you guys notice, uh, are able to get in contact with Chris Farley's father, um, tell him this. This is my advice to you, sir. If you hear someone say something um, and you want to take a critical perspective to, is it true? Is it false? Should I believe it? This is what you do. Just imagine a black guy is saying it. And then ask yourself, would I believe this? Okay. Imagine a black guy is saying it and then ask yourself, would I believe this? 
Now you might say, "Quit! You know, well, why a black guy?" <laughs> well, because you have a natural level of suspicion, right? There's going to be a natural, inherent level of suspicion. And so, whereas you're looking at a beautiful Korean woman or a beautiful Ukrainian woman, you you want her words to be true. You want her to love you. But if it's a black guy, you already like, what's this nigga about to say? <laughs> you know, what scam is this motherfucker about to hit me with? So just imagine it's a black guy, and then when they say what they say, just like, huh. Oh, if a black guy said that, would I believe that? Nah, hell nah. Yeah, there you go. You're welcome. After arriving home, Ryan was contacted by a man who claimed he could help him meet her. Actually, I was contacted through Facebook <laughs> from somebody. This, this is great. Shout out to these this scam team. You hear me? They got a scam team. It's really one dude with a bunch of profiles, but it's a scam team. It's great. So, um, the guy contacts him. He says, hello, I work with your girlfriend, Anastasia, your girlfriend. It, you see that they're carrying on the scam with this guy to keep him involved. They're using terms he uses like girlfriend so that he feels as though he has some ownership over the girl and he's somehow connected to her. That's great. That was a talent scout and photographer. And he said he felt sorry for me that <laughs> we had never met or anything. Uh, for a good the real low price of fourteen hundred dollars, that's it. He sold me hey. her actual, real first name, last name, what? her phone number, nice of him. her um, other information about her. Uh, Just fourteen hundred for the info. Oh yeah, buy that, buy that, bro. That's a deal. Her Facebook and other things. Terrible. I uh, spent over forty thousand dollars to that. <laughs> look at this. Look at this nut right here. And other look at this. I. Uh, you have a deal he is excited to do it like this boy was thirsty sahara desert thirsty that message you have a deal and dude scammed him initially only asking for 1400 how you end up paying bro forty thousand? now that teaches you all a lot about psychology actually and, and this happens to you all the time whether it's a marketing firm or a woman they they make you bleed to death by a thousand cuts they take an inch. They get a mile, but they take it inch by inch. $40,000 to acquire a visa for her. That's crazy. That doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> Why are you laughing at this man? Why are you laughing at this man? This is not funny. Then this attorney acting as a mediator, uh, his fee was over seven thousand. Damn, they didn't uh, throw in like full fake characters. You got a deal broker, you got the, the visa meal. agent, Constantine you got the attorney. Seemed to always have another hurdle for Brian to jump That's through, crazy. and it always required money. Because on this Rondevo site, you don't get their phone numbers, you never get their last names, and they have filters on the site. That if you try to uh, exchange information, contact information, or emails or anything like that, the filters block it out. Up until this point, Brian had sent Constantine and Anastasia's company over $100,000 just in fees to take their relationship off of the website. When Brian refused to pay the rest of the fees, things spiraled out of control. They were trying to extort me. They were trying to blackmail me. Sir, 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 sir. They've already extorted you. They've already extorted you, okay? You know what he said? They tried to blackmail him. Now, that would have been funny if this fake-ass Anastasia was like, send me a picture of that pecker. Send me a picture of that pecker. I know it's chubby. Send me that chubby pecker. And then he he over here with his flip phone. Nigga got old ass flip phone. Taking dick pics. He got he, he he like hold on. I'm getting tired. I have to hold my stomach up. Hold on. <sighs> he got to he got to coordinate this shit. Lift the stomach. Click the picture. You heard me. So, you know he taking pictures of his meat, sending it to Shorty, sending her that that turkey lunch meat meat, and uh, and bro over here the scammer. He's really in Nigeria. He's like. Hey, look at this. Look at this. He over there with his scammer homies in the computer in the internet cafe. They all looking at this man, meat dying laughing. <laughs> He's looking at this, this man, meat dying laughing. He's like, yes, this is good. I can use this, right? Yes, yes, I got this one. 
I got this one. Bintley for every. You want the Bintley? Bintley for everybody. Yes, yes. Oh, this is terrible, man. The only time they stopped harassing me was uh, when I said I had gone and spent a couple hours with the FBI. I had their photos. I had their phone number. Now, you know the boy's brain dead when he says, leave me the hell alone. My guy. Just, just turn off your fucking computer, man. What the fuck is wrong with you? Sign off of the website. What the fuck is wrong with you, my boy? Delete the Facebook app, man. Why you act like they knocking on your motherfucking front door? You goddamn nut. What's wrong with people? You know, you're a fat old man. Uh <laughs> oh, you th y'all didn't have to tell him that. These boys is mean. They called him a fat old man. That's a mean shit if I ever heard it. I'm a fat old man. Your cats probably stink and smell like shit and that kind of stuff. Our team started to research this woman and the website he met her on. Oh, boy. Make oh sure boy. you stick around until the end. We then looked into Anastasia after running her images through the reverse image. And he met through Facebook dating. You're talking to... A Wait, they said they met through Facebook dating? Does that even exist anymore? I don't know. I didn't even... like. I, I missed that whole wave. Another woman online will stop Brian from almost making another huge mistake as he falls into another scam. Damn, an yeah, another uh, Because I had orders to fill and my next amount was like 23500 23, to fill and process the orders on uh, Black Friday. After a few days of researching everything, we sat down with Brian for the first time. Hey, Brian, thanks for hopping on the call with us today. When you would talk to Anastasia, the site charged you, right? To talk to them on that site. You're First off, I don't think you're talking. I have a feeling that he's just typing to her. See, talking and typing is different. That's critical. You have to buy credits. And then basically um, every message that you sent was a two credit deduction or about 50 cents in cost. Brian spent well over $100,000 buying the tokens through Rondevo to continue to chat awesome. with Anastasia. Bag. Rondevo has a credit system to message. These boys over here accidentally uh, advertising Rondevo. You got some simps at home right now. Huh, write that down. That sounds interesting. The girls respond, huh? Okay. You go through a personality test. They ask after you're done. My interest for every. You know what? She Marie said, it's really sad to see. Nah, it's not sad to see. You know why it's not sad to see? Because here's the thing. He had, you know, a quarter million dollars that apparently he wasn't doing nothing with. You're, he wasn't doing nothing with it. <laughs> and Shorty was like, you know what? I could use that. No need to let that money sit there wasting away the way your wife was. I, I can use that. Shorty or the man behind the computer? You know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. $15. And then I was greeted by this screen to buy more. Okay. Logging. Okay. Let's see. We'll see if it catches up. About buying the credits and later finding out that they were chatting with fake women. As we delve deeper into Rondebo's reviews, we observed that a significant number of users expressed concerns regarding the site's currency system. Many individuals reported having problems with the site's coins, including difficulties acquiring and spending them. In addition to these concerns, some users also... So what you're finding is that the site is a scam. And what I mean by that, is, and this is common, this is not only Ron Devo, this, this fake-ass Eastern European-run website, but I will go as far as to point out that Tinder is also a scam. I promise you it is. Tinder is scamming you. Yes, that's right. Most of the profiles on there are fake and inactive. You know, there are chicks who have deactivated Tinder, chicks who have deleted the Tinder app, but their wet their profile is still being pushed out to you. Huh? Yeah. So it's overpopulating Tinder with good looking women, especially when you're early on in your swipes. You notice when you first download the app and you start swiping, the women are gorgeous. And then they the gorgeous ones tend to taper off. And then even when you finally match, which if you're in the United States, you're not matching as frequently as you'd like to, uh, when you finally get your match, then you look at the response rate. It's either really low or you'll notice when you get your responses, they'll engage you for a couple hours, maybe even the first day, but then they disappear and ghost you. 
Uh, they're not ghosting you. It just turns out they were never really there. You, my friend, were chatting with a low wage worker in the Philippines or in some other place with low income where they speak good English, like South Africa. Yes, it's true. Yes, it's true. So many things that you're dealing with today are illusions. And you might say, Mark, what are you a conspiracy theorist? No, I'm a guy who has been in the mobile application space. I'm a guy who's one of my investors owned the largest, uh, created and owned the largest dating website in the world. That's who I am. And even if you look at Ashley Madison, they were actually busted. And it turned out that on Ashley Madison, uh, they had a lot of fake bots on there engaging males with messages, even though they weren't women, they were bots. And why is that? Because when you got a website like Ashley Madison, the persons who are paying for it are overwhelmingly male. And to keep those dummies paying, you got to engage them, right? They got to get some kind of stimulus every now and then. And so they seeded fake messages. And the theory is that you seed the fake messages long enough to keep the end user, the male end user online long enough so that at some point he can actually meet a real woman which will make up for all the fake ones, right? So you're just keeping him online until he actually meets a real woman and goes on a date, right? You're just trying to bridge that experience because there's an insufficient number of women on those sites. What we're, we're talking about is like 80% dudes. Yeah, 80% dudes. It's like going to the worst cock fest party on earth. Yeah, and, and here's the worst thing, you're paying to get into the party, right? Isn't that terrible? Isn't that terrible? Yes, indeed. Carrying on. Reported receiving excessive amounts of email spams from the platform. Several individuals noted that despite requesting the deletion of their accounts, they continued to receive notifications and messages from Rondivo. Despite all of these complaints, it was apparent that the most common issue plaguing Rondivo's users was the high cost of the site's tokens. Overall, it seems that while Rondevo may offer some appealing features for those looking to find a beautiful woman to talk to over the internet, most of the users don't actually feel that the person they are chatting with is who they claim to be. We then looked into Anastasia. Well, here's the thing, though, and this is comical. They just noted that the data indicates that the average user on there does not believe that they're actually talking to a woman or actually talking to the woman in the profile they're chatting with however they're still there <laughs> they're still there on that website behaving like a robot that is the sadness of the human being you think computers have software you think computers run on programs so do you and i and the worst thing on earth is when our program is messed up but we keep running on that loop so many of us are doing that I saw someone mention Boss University. That's a, a great resource for getting yourself deprogrammed, removing the bad programs, bad habits, and vices that ail you and keep you away from happiness and success. The very first section of lessons in the self-improvement section of Boss University, it talks about how to actually get to happiness. We do so many things that hurt us. They don't make us happier. You think this fat fella feels better after he's lost a quarter of a million dollars and got a broken heart? Damn, broke his heart and his pockets. Double whammy. After running her images through the reverse image search on our website, we actually found that she's a print model. Um, she's not the person behind this profile and her images and name were stolen to dupe you out of money. So they used their picture. You dummy, why are you repeating what they just said? You know what the hell they said, and you knew what it meant. Here's the worst thing about it. Why don't they ask him the hard question? This is why he's going to continue being what I call, I think the scientific term for this is a dumb fuck. He's going to continue being that because they're not about to ask him the hard question, which is, hey, bruh, bruh, uh, your neck is sitting on your fucking chest, and on your chest you have gray hairs. You're a fat, old middle class guy, probably lower middle class with no exceptional accomplishments. Why do you think a 25 year old supermodel wants you? What in your rabbit ass mind makes you think she wants you? 
they're not asking him hard questions. So he's going to continue being fucking deluded and just say, oh, this was a scammer. That's why it happened. No, you're a scammer, buddy. You scammed yourself. They're not asking him the hard questions. And we know for damn sure he's not asking himself the hard questions. Fake profile, communicating with nobody. Yes. And yeah, that sucks. So much money wasted that could have been used in my retirement and quality uh, of life. It's a the realization that this person was not behind this profile hit Brian hard. A few days later, no, Brian not. received this video from the real Anastasia. Hello, Brian. I don't know who is writing to you in Telegram. From my name, it's not me. So I am recommended to you to not write to that person. Aww. The fact that this woman says that Aww. she wasn't behind this profile contradicts Rondivo's verification policy. If Anastasia <laughs> wasn't behind the profile, <laughs> Who was? Oh, Let us know what you guys think down in the comment section. Wow. After going through. That's sad right there. These boys running some real major big time scams. Now notice the people who created this video, they weren't smart enough to say what corporation, like the, the corporate name and then where that corporation is headquartered. I'd bet my bottom dollar that it's headquartered in Eastern Europe. Through all of Anastasia's information with Brian, he wanted us to look into to another woman named Eileen. I think who Brian had in like, contact with. My boy Brian was like, don't even trip. I got me another little bitty. <laughs> but here's the shicey thing about your boy Brian, right? You didn't spend a hundred thou while on this one, bro. Then you didn't spend damn near uh 200 thou while on the other bra. You pursuing them at the same time, but you had actually showed up on Shorty with an engagement ring. That's what messes me up. So you're pursuing both of them at the same time, acting like you're in love. And you show up with an engagement ring on one of them. You desperate as hell. You crazy as hell. I have no mercy. If he'd have came into my court, I would have threw this out. You're talking to another woman online. Another. One. What's her name? Her name was Eileen, supposedly. And nigga says supposedly. Now, uh, let me let me switch up my video setup real quick. I got. I think I can remedy this. Don't let me share on here. That's kind of weird. Try that again. Let me know if uh, it catches up. That she owned a hairstyle salon or something and that she was based in New York. Do you think Eileen's real? <laughs> I think she's hired by whoever it is behind it. Uh, some sort of patsy. Uh, I did talk to Eileen actually in video calls and chats. Oh, okay. And if it wasn't her, it was somebody that looked a great deal like her. What are most of your conversations like when you talk to her? Short conversations. Connections were bad. Uh, so what I'm wondering with this Eileen character, and, and shout out to the Asian shorties. My boy said, look, I can't go Eastern European. They scamming too hard. Let me see what these Asian things is talking about. Shout out. Um, what I would like to know is, was he actually even talking to this woman on video? Because you are able to take videos and basically cut them up and have someone say general things like, oh, how are you? Pause, 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 pause. Oh, I'm good to hear. That's good to hear. I'm great too. And then pause, 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 and have the person ask a question, right? And so you could actually play a video within the context of a google video call google meet facetime instagram you can rig it up so that you can play a video to represent your side i'm wondering was he even actually talking to someone he is older and advanced in age so i don't know if he was actually even talking to her you you'd only re be able to assess that if you were asking her like very unusual questions and requiring her to answer you know someone could easily play a video and you know basically not answer any of his questions and just keep presenting questions making him feeling uh, feel like he's being engaged by a real person so we went back to uh the texting on the apps 
she said she had studied fashion design. She did show me and had some sketching and drawing ability. That part of her background or training might be true, or she at least has some talent in it. Brian met Eileen through Facebook dating. She claimed to be an entrepreneur living in Malaysia. They had started chatting in November of last year. Brian explained to us that he was deeply in love with Eileen. Deeply, he even had yeah. photos of her put up around his house. And Did y'all see that movie One Hour Photo? There's a movie called One Hour Photo. It's this creepy ass old dude. Uh, th this should this man and printed out photos which is some old school shit to do right man then actually printed out photos of a stranger and put them around his house that is the most psychotic oh lord uh shout to uh rando against the point where he's been the only one in a while huh yeah i guess we we'll, we'll read it because that's the yeah, second one absolutely he says speaking of brian spitting bad game do you have a video detailing simple do's and don'ts of talking to women yeah, I actually got a lot of videos like that. Um, if you go to patreon.com slash the saint in the center, uh, a lot of videos, in fact, classics. also have a video that describes what I like to call inevitable contact. So you can position yourself in certain places where you're, when you have to engage the woman, right? Where it, it's more natural to engage the woman. It doesn't look like you just saw her and you walked up thirsty as shit like Brian. You feel me? And like Anastasia, he also planned to marry Eileen. The two chatted all day. And Eileen would even send Brian. This boy is lovesick. He needs a therapist. I mean, what are the chances that you happen to meet two women within the space of one year that are both marriage worthy? Brian photos that she had drawn for him. So when exactly did the money start to get involved? ASAP. With Eileen, she wanted to know if I had, I was familiar with anything about uh, e-commerce, which I wasn't. She showed me her store and she wanted to have something to uh, have in common with one another. She wanted me to talk to Caroline, who was her um, mentor and a good friend of hers, supposedly. And it was Caroline that helped me uh, set up my store and did a lot of one on one training uh, via screenshots to set it up and then put some uh, products into the store. Brian and Eileen chatted about her business a lot within the first couple of weeks. She was looking for a man who was as financially stable as she was. Eileen told Brian how easy she was able to make money through her e-commerce. Shout out to uh, Mr. Tabbitt supporting via PayPal. Truly appreciate Paul it. Paul said peace to the saints. Shout out to Paul. Her store. This is when she introduced Brian to her business advisor, Caroline. She would help him set up the store, but she charged a setup fee of $2,200. Did Caroline ask you for more money after you sent her the $2,200? It's available yeah. as well. Uh, because I had Just ordered imagine. it, so lending my next amount was let, like, let me tell you how badly this man got sidetracked. You over here trying to get you a piece of pie, 20, right? 20, trying to slate his broad. And somehow the broad then boggled your mind and Jedi mind tricked you so damn bad that you then went from trying to smash the broad to now the hoe got you creating an e-commerce store. Like, what the f where they do that at? My nigga over here selling slinkies on Amazon.com when he's just trying to slay an Asian girl. What in the hell? My boy is deeply distracted. Three thousand five hundred to fill and process the orders on uh, Black Friday weekend. I was excited. I thought I was making a lot of easy money. Within the first thirty days, easy money. Brian saw his investment grow to over three hundred thousand dollars. But every time someone would purchase something through his store, he needed to pay the fees to get enough inventory. Every morning, he would sign into his e-commerce account and see a five thousand dollar profit. I only had maybe uh, 2200 I think I put into it, but then the amounts grew increasing as my sales grew increasing, and I supposedly had two highly prized customers that placed really big orders and had talked about placing future orders for like 550000 worth of iPhones at a time, in which with the sale of that being made, my clearance was like eighty two or 83000 profit what was the last investment you made the last investment was for 20 23,500 that was to withdraw the 465,000 so all together Brian how much have you sent and invested into this business at that point I had invested right around a quarter million dollars 
And where did all this money come from? Sadly, from my retirement. <laughs> Just give us some time. Damn. We'll look into things, and then we'll get back to you within a couple of days. Bad. Um, I actually tried to create a poll. It looks like it was unsuccessful. Uh, let me go ahead and do that right now. I want to create a poll real quick to see if you guys like this kind of uh, story. There's a, a tremendous number of simp stories that I can present to you. Um, so if you guys like these, you know, so, you know they're different kinds of individuals. You know, this is a fat old white guy. You got some skinny black old guys. Uh, you got some young guys. You got all kinds of folks. So let me go ahead and see if I can get a proper poll set up real quick to see if we should do these kind. Yeah, I posted that, but it doesn't have the yes or no option. Kind of strange little feature YouTube put on there. I don't really fully understand that one yet. And by the way, for those who um, have the how to create and monetize your app, that uh, live session will be going on in about two hours, a little under two hours. And you'll find that on the uh, course. So once you log into the course, go to the second session. It'll have the Google Hangout link for us to um, get together and go through that lesson. For those who have not purchased it yet, it is linked in the bottom of the chat if you were interested in joining. Okay, we have Darius said, any way to teach women that you've only met three times to stop playing the non-response games even after they see your stories or just bump up to three a days? Yeah, bump up to a three a day because if the women are, if look, look, here's the thing. Women are extremely active on social media. They crave attention desperately. If a woman's not being responsive to you, that's because she has some other guy that she thinks is a better option or she has other things or persons that she's prioritized over you. So there's something about you that's not appealing to her. It could be you. she doesn't think you're very good looking or it could be that she thinks you have standards and morals that she can't meet and she's a self-saboteur. There are many reasons, but at the end of the day, What you don't want to do is get stuck in the mud and slow down trying to pursue this chick that you'll never get. And that's why this particular story that, you know, we went through is very instructive in as much as it shows you a guy pursuing a woman that is essentially a phantom. You'll you'll never get her. I've had situations many times, I kid you not, where a chick asks for my contact info and then she falls off. You heard me? Or a chick will look me up on IG after I went to, you know, her restaurant or what have you, and then they'll fall off. they, They want attention. You know, they want to get close to something attractive, but they don't feel good enough to actually take hold of it. A lot of people in life, they're failures at heart. And so they'll always put themselves in a position to ultimately fail. And if they find that you're a winner, well, subconsciously, they actually really don't want to deal with you because that would that would speak well of themselves. And a lot of people, they have a low self view. And so what they do is there's a subconscious program running in their mind that causes them to take the actions to keep them in a low place. I mean, you just saw that right now with the psychology of Brian. He clearly has something gone wrong in his head because he consistently took the actions to get scammed out of his money. Ball got scammed out of a hundred thousand. He's like, let me get another chick that's going to do the same thing and then get scammed out of a damn near 200,000 by the next chick. That's a program. That's repeatedly bad behavior. Carrying on. All caught up? Fantastic. Saints, it's been a pleasure to have this time to fellowship with you. Let us end this with our tradition, the creed of the assassin. Repeat after me with full conviction, knowing this is true of you. The creed of the assassin. I'm going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable. And I'm going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time, peace to the saints.